Welcome back to Red Panda of Destiny, here for another episode of TV Show of the Year. We're, of course, still covering American Vandal, my TV show of the year for 2017. Um, and we are on episode two, A Limp Alibi. Definitely no innuendo there. <laughs> I noticed a couple of the episodes coming up have kind of interesting titles, shall we say. But weirdly, they seem to have missed on some of them. The first one was very standard. Vandalism and vulgarity. Well, okay. But this one has clear innuendo in it. Anyway. Um, this isn't really that important of an episode. It's kind of a filler episode, you know, explains a few things. Um, introduces um, two teachers, Mr. Kraz, who I believe is a math teacher. He's, he's like the cool teacher. Um, and uh, Coach Rafferty, who is... What does he teach? I'm not sure what he teaches. Probably history. Whole coaches teach history. Because they can't be bothered to get a real history teacher to treat history. Um... <laughs> We get a nice little moment um, from Alex Tromboli here. Um, in he uh, he realizes what he's saying doesn't actually make sense, and you can just barely tell. Um, he's talking about um, the meaning of having a, hey, typing texting "hey" with two Y's, and apparently that is um, code for sex. Um, and he's saying that that means they want to fuck. But he never said that. He said he got a hand job. He's like, and so he kind of trips up and goes, you did a hand job. It's, it's, it's an interesting little clue there. Um, doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, but the extra wise thing is actually very funny because they, they actually go through a debate and then they go and they say, um, some memes confirm this. So they're actually using memes for research, um, which I thought was pretty funny. And I think that's that's one of the fun things about this show is it um, it really dives deep into the modern uh, teen culture of memes and the internet culture. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's um, almost like... After my time in high school, really, um, I don't think meme culture was quite as big back then. I mean, this was, uh, let's see, I graduated from high school in 2014. I mean, it was still there, but over the last 10 years, I mean, that stuff has exploded. It's very different. I still remember when everyone had a razor as a phone instead of a smartphone, uh, right on the edge of everything there. So, yeah, I found that interesting. Um, but the part of this show that really um, makes it feel realistic to me is the car that they're all driving around in. Um, the uh, the film crew is a Honda Odyssey, like almost exactly the same as the one that I learned to drive in and that we, my family still has. Um, my sister's taking it back and forth to college right now. And it's like, it's like exactly the same spec. They're inside the car. I can see all the buttons that I like... I've spent so much time in that car, and it's just like, that's high school right there. Just weird tangent there. Um, but then the show, um, it goes and explains the alibi of the Wayback Boys is that they were playing a prank on one of their neighbors, um, Mr. Jansen. Um, and the basic premise is this Mr. Jansen is a conspiracy nut. I mean, the, the whole, you know, moon landing was a hoax, probably a flat earther, that sort of thing. Um, and although yeah, maybe he's, he's more of the, you know, aliens in Area 51 and, you know, uh, <laughs> make it 2020 appropriate um, wires in face masks and crazy stuff like that. 
Um, so they basically trick him into t- taking all of his, anything with a microchip outside and putting it on his lawn. And that's their big, crazy prank that they've been planning for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, but it's actually a pretty good alibi um, when you think about it, because why would they plan two pranks on the same day, at the same time? Why would they interrupt a prank to go and do another prank? It's a bit of a weird situation. Um, but then um, Dylan tries to explain why he left, um, and it's apparently because his girlfriend, Mac, posted on her Instagram something that was suggestive, and they had, I think they'd just broken up, and then they get back together this, that day, um, and he's took that as a sign, wrongly or rightly, to go over there, um, and that sort of explains that, um, and why he lied to the Wayback Boys makes sense because of the way they act and the way they react to questions about Mac. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Um, and then they start a whole thing about um, a voicemail that was left on Mr. Jansen's um, answering machine. And it's ostensibly the key to solving the case in that um, Dylan's was allegedly doing a Kiefer Sutherland impression, um, which is, according to the way it was, the best Kiefer Sutherland ex- um, imitation you've ever heard, and it's actually terrible. Um, but the, if they had that voicemail, they would be able to categorically prove that he was there um, using one of his friend's phones. I really should remember their names, but whatever. And that is kind of the the next bit of evidence that they want to search down. Um, and then the the cliffhanger is actually kind of interesting. Is It's that um, it's Peter starting to think um, maybe Dylan did do it, which considering some of the evidence seems like a bit of a jump, but whatever. And he's like, his, I think his last line is, maybe I am his greatest prank. And it's like... <laughs> He's getting him to make this documentary as a joke, which actually would be pretty clever um, for Dylan. So I will give him that. Uh, but uh, that kind of wraps up this episode. Not much happens. Um, hopefully the next episode is a little more exciting. But uh, obviously you need the dull episodes in series like this to exposit all the information and build your uh, overarching story. Um, so definitely necessary. <laughs>